It's now two minutes moving down past 11. At this time, we bring you a health discussion on COVID-19. We join your host, Sheena Harry. Thank you, Hazari, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you to all those who are tuned in live here on DBS Radio, also on Kyrie FM and on the Office of the Prime Minister's YouTube and Facebook pages. Of course, we're engaging the public in discussion on COVID-19. And this morning, our guest is the Chief Environmental Health Officer, Tassie Thomas. Good morning, Ms. Thomas. Good morning, Sheila, and good morning, DBS. Good morning to the listening public. And you may be wondering, why do we have Ms. Thomas on the air this morning but the reason for that is because she is responsible for all the port health officers and the port health officers would be those you would meet at the ports of entry when you come in and they'd be responsible for screenings and all the processes uh, that determine whether someone is allowed to even come into the country right miss thomas yes that's very true all right now miss thomas i'm going to put you on the spot right away as i do i've done with all the guests before i'm going to ask you the question that everybody wants the answers to Mm -hmm. a ferry came in this morning Mm -hmm. and of course that has caused some hysteria now i if i understand it correctly it was comprised mostly of Dominican nationals. Is that right? Yes, very true. Okay, and we mm. cannot turn away Dominican nationals. No, no. All right, so now tell the public what happened. What happened this morning when the ferry came into port? Okay, um, as you may have heard, on Tuesday, this week actually the 17th, um, when the French announced the closing of all their borders and ferries would be traveling no more. So... This sort of caught a lot of um, travelers by surprise. So you had a lot of persons from Dominica caught up in the French countries of Guadeloupe and Martinique, as well as St. Lucia. So somehow you had to find a way to bring the people back home because the people are on the other side. They don't belong there. Most of them must have gone to shop for a day or two and want to come back home. So you have to make provision for them. So somehow provisions were made for them, and we will be having not only this ferry this morning, but we'll be having one tonight, we'll be having one tomorrow morning, one tomorrow night, one Sunday morning, one Sunday night. And we've had information in advance from the port agents. So what we do is arrange a procedure, a clear procedure as to how to process these passengers, how to screen them in order that they do not, co- uh, in order that if they are uh, somehow um, without symptoms and they are carrying something that they do not spread it to anybody, most of all Dominicans and the people they live with at their Mm -hmm. homes and so on. So we have um, put a nice procedure together and we are um, first off implementing this procedure on this very first ferry that is coming in this morning. So everything is in place and you may think, well, we are only um, dealing with the ferry, but we are not only dealing with the ferry, we are dealing with all vessels coming to the port of entries in mm-hmm. Dominica. Now, if they didn't come on the ferry, there are still ways that they can enter the country since the borders are not very, closed, right? Very much so, mm-hmm. because I, for one, this morning, actually, by 7 o'clock, I was already screening passengers from a little cargo vessel that come from Guadeloupe down on the port. Usually, this little cargo vessel, they have five crew, a captain. They come every Friday with their um, goods and so on. But the people are over there and they want to come in, so they are going to find a way Mm -hmm. to come in. So we know in that, liaising with DASPA, liaising with custom, immigration, and so on, when the vessels come, they must get clearance from customs. Mm-hmm. So hence, that's how we, are, um, we, we get the information. Mm-hmm. Also, some of the vessels have their agents in Dominica. The agents will inform us as well. Mm-hmm. There's no secrecy going on. Right. So we put measures, we, we, we have additional staff, we put measures in place. And one thing I found out, Sheena, uh, especially, I mean, you may say, well, I am the chief, I am the other officers, my staff are working and I'm not on the field and so on. But no, being involved directly doing this um, um, this sort of work, 
I realize the kind of stress the officers have mm -hmm. to go through, especially if they are to do it alone. So we have implemented, we observed that actually since um, earlier this week, where we introduced um, a body system where um, every officer has somebody else, another officer working with them. Right. It takes the pressure off, it puts you more at ease, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you are not likely to make the mistakes that you would make if it was you alone Definitely. working. All so. right. So you, you spoke about the procedures and mm -hmm. I know there are some parts of that you cannot really go into yes, specific exactly. details. But mm -hmm. let's say I am one of the passengers that mm -hmm. coming in later today. What can I expect to happen once I get here? Once you get here, we you, actually you are interviewed. We have um we have your um we have a case based form for every passenger. We interview you we get all your contact information and um if you if you are not if you are not for um further assessment by a doctor or anything that is if you do not have a high temperature or if you are not exhibiting symptoms like coughing and sneezing and this kind of thing we regard you as low risk so what we would do is um have a session with you where you are home quarantined and explain the entire procedure of home quarantine to you. We give you information, telling you on a card, telling you that if in case you come down with these symptoms within the 14 days that you are home mm -hmm. quarantine, you should not you you should not um leave the home or go to hospital or mm -hmm. any health care facility. There's a number there. This is the number you call. Mm -hmm. And people in home quarantine, they also have the their, their, um, medical staff within the community that have been informed of the persons in the community that they are supposed to deal with. That's why we take all the information on the case-based form. Mm -hmm. They are um, given this information. So every day or every other day, they monitor these people to see whether they are coming down with symptoms mm -hmm. and what they are supposed to do. With that home quarantine, you are not supposed to leave the home within 14 days you are supposed to stay at home for mm -hmm. that 14 days and it is no joking business you can go in the yard and do little thing go in the kitchen um in the yard itself and do whatever you are doing but you cannot go into the public you cannot go shopping mm -hmm. you cannot go to the bar you cannot go to church you cannot go anywhere mm -hmm. and this is serious the people we have on the home quarantine they may believe that nobody is looking at them and that is something we always tell them somebody is looking at you and if we find you anywhere in the public you are to be a police will pick you up mm -hmm. and then there are repercussions okay so i'm just saying there are repercussions we won't explain really <laughs> what it what the repercussions are mm -hmm. but the home quarantine is a serious thing because something something i um in doing these measures we as environmental health officers we are the first point of contact with the um travelers coming in and we have measures at the at the airports we have measures at the um seaports and so on and something i must say everybody by now is aware of the pandemic you are coming from um, what we regard as a hot spot. A hot spot is an area where you have a lot of cases and transmission taking place and, and so on. Mm -hmm. You have these people coming in. Okay, you travel probably from the United States and then you know what measures you are finding in different airports as you are coming in and so on. And you come to Dominica and you realize, well, okay, there, there are health officers doing something in Dominica too. Mm -hmm. And then somehow... You saw something that is wrong or something you figure that they are not doing right. Instead of you calling on the officer and saying, well, um, I am so-and-so, if you are an official, mm -hmm. I am so-and-so, um, I'm traveling and I know about this. this. This is what you are doing wrong and I think you should correct it and so on. Instead of doing that, you let it go on, and the first thing in the back of your mind is, 
oh, I am the prime minister's body, or this minister is my friend, or I know the PS, I know the CMO, I cannot wait to meet them for me to tell them what um, health people are doing wrong at the mm-hmm. airport. You don't, you don't do that. Because from time you even, t- you have to think and think smart. From the time you take this taxi, mm-hmm. you are coming from a hotspot. You have to think of the taxi pers- the people together with you on the taxi. Oh, oh, I might be contaminated. How am I contaminating the people in the taxi? Right. Why? How am I sharing what I have with the people on the taxi? Whereas, if you realize nothing was done for you at the airport, you could have talked to the health officer, and the, of- the health officer would have told you, "Well, okay, um, this is what to do. This is what to do. Let me do this for you. Let me do that for you." No, they pass straight. Some of them pass straight. They go, they call their best buddies and say, I came from the USA and I came to Dominica and nobody asked me a single question. You think that is nice? <laughs> when you see the health officers at the, at the airport and you didn't even bother to ask them a question or tell them what it is you think that they are doing wrong. Mm-hmm. Because as I tell you, it's like every day, this whole situation, as the it Minister evolves. of Health mm-hmm. tell you, it is, it is evolving. It's a, it's a fluid situation. So every day you will tweak your um, whatever plan, you are right. doing and add new measures, do new things. People don't learn new things overnight, you know. Mm-hmm. You will make little mistakes. You will um, People call you out on it. Then you'll correct it. People tell us what it is that you're doing wrong. We put things in place until you have everything nice and dandy going on and so on. But I would like to admonish the people of the world because mm-hmm. we have travelers we have people everywhere coming in every day we have procedures in place in little dominica as well so you have family in dominica you are living in the united states or um, maybe the uk you are coming home the family the family in dominica that you are going to if you have not been tested or showing symptoms in the UK where you are coming from or, or the US. Call your family and tell them, look, I am coming home tomorrow, but um, you know the UK is a hot spot or the US is a hot spot and so on. What do I have to do? Ask them to involve the Ministry of Health. Call the Ministry of Health. Mm-hmm. So the person in turn calls the Ministry of Health. That is how we get a lot of persons yeah. that are kind of coming from the hot zone that we do home quarantine mm-hmm. with. You know, we put them under home quarantine because they call their families. Mm-hmm. Some of them call their families and tell them that they're coming. Mm-hmm. And then we put things in place. We are looking sure. out for them and we tell them what they have to do. And we home quarantine them and so on. Okay. Yes. Miss Thomas, do you know if we've had an issue with compliance? people coming in have they refused to be screened do you know if we've had that issue at all actually nobody refuses to be screened and um and i think this is this is commendable people know the situation you know usually um passengers coming in and to them it's a rush to go for immigration to go and do what they have to do Mm -hmm. but they respect what we do they take their time and they comply Mm -hmm. nobody has refused screening All all right thank you to the Miss Thomas for joining us. Of course, the lines will be opened <coughs> very soon <coughs> and you'll have a, an opportunity to pose your questions. The numbers to call 448-3284-616-1327. Of course, 1-800-327 and our overseas line 305-432-9744. All right. So, Miss Thomas, let's get back mm-hmm. to the quarantine process. You mentioned quarantine, but what advice would you give, especially to family members? You mentioned that they can call and say, yes, my brother, sister is coming home. But how can family members who are already here, they might have to host these individuals? What should they be doing? Yes, there, there, are, there, are, different, there, um, there are different things that they can do. You may have... You may have um, a bedroom in your in your home that you know well okay i can pull this person from this bedroom with me and then have this person use this bedroom all to themselves to be um their quarantine area where they minimize contact with the rest of the family they can do that Mm -hmm. likewise they might say well okay let me put the person in a hotel but before you even think of the hotel situation you have to let um you have to give the correct information and we would prefer that they get the Ministry of Health involved. So we would liaise with the um, patient, with the family as well as the 
the hotel and let them know well okay this person is coming from a hot spot and this person is just being quarantined mm -hmm. person and and inform the person of the quarantine situation nicely as we usually do mm -hmm. so they know well they are not supposed to go to the bars or to um fancy eating thing everything has to be brought to their rooms mm -hmm. and everything has to be done to them for them and they are not supposed to leave go to the public or anywhere and that's the situation so that can be taken care of and what about well. the cleaning process you know we know that we we specify a lot about how to clean the yes. areas so yes. you um, know if i pick you up on my vehicle to take you home or uh, you're in my house what about that okay if somebody um the the current the areas where we um really specify the um, the sanitization of the area is mostly where we um, have persons that are coming from high risk areas. Mm -hmm. We have people coming from high risk areas and then you are um, quarantined in one room and so on. You are supposed to have your hand sanitizer, your, your um, alcohol based sanitizer, whatever um, thing you have to make sure that you do not spread the germs. We advise you, we give you a whole lecture on how to sanitize and whatever your cup, your plate, everything that you are using is marked just for you and it is washed and sanitized. If you do not have bleach, um, what another thing we try to tell people is that bleach is, there's no better sanitizer really than, <laughs> than bleach. You use bleach, it is available, it is cheap, and people are not buying it out from the supermarket, <laughs> so that is good. Because to tell you the truth, I, I I saw a poor lady in a supermarket, um, and she's behind me in the line, and she knock on my shoulder, and she tell me she has a bottle of Lysol, and and the price on that bottle of Lysol, and she tell me that they said to buy the oh. Lysol, um. Tell me how to use it. You know how to use it. And then I had to give her a whole lecture mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as to what she can buy instead of the yes. Lysol. Because she didn't have that kind of money for the Lysol. Right. But everybody said to buy Lysol and she's buying Lysol. Everybody's looking for Lysol. But you can do just a good, a, as good a job with um, alcohol. Um, the 70% alcohol that is being sold um, from the drugstores and so on and um, bleach, household bleach for sanitizing. Mm -hmm. If it is an area occupied by um, the public, for example, a, a taxi, mm -hmm. um, that is why if we, have, if we have somebody living from a point of entry showing signs and symptoms and so on, when you are transported in this um, form of um, transportation, that, um, um, that transport has to be sanitized mm -hmm. afterwards. So we, um, th there are companies that uh, um, that we work with, they know what the process involves, how they do it, how to go about sanitizing um, their vehicles. Ambulance has been, ambulance services, fire and ambulance, they have been trained. Mm -hmm. They know how to sanitize their ambulances when they carry um, persons and so on. I, I mean, it's nothing new to them. That's something they've been doing, you know, mm -hmm. all the time and so on. So sanitizing of the vehicle um the transport medium is very important all right miss thomas let's yes. take our very first caller for this morning good morning caller peace be on to you ma'am and your guests and to the staff at dbs and all listeners thank you so much um very interesting program and you hit the nail as you begin with the elderly and my concern is about the elderly even here in my country um um i I'm worried of those who cannot get out. How if 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 um they be aware that persons could because you know the, the necessary things that they want because they are warning the elderly here not to travel out, but they are they are upset about it. Right now we have our minister of elderly affairs on one of our radio stations asking them not to not to go, but they are saying that nothing is wrong with them and. They're independent and they need to go to do their businesses. And um, I am concerned about those persons who cannot get out. Concerned about the kids too. But um, as you say, a lot of them don't know what to buy. So what I I, I feel that they should do is um, get some more programs and the, the simple things that they can afford because I know a lot of them would not be able to buy certain things, and sometimes some of these people push gouge. And if there's simple things that they have in their home that they can use to help sanitize their home and their cells, you know, I feel that the radio station should bring, 
um, bring a lot more advertisement um, and these things that they'll be able to help themselves. But my concern is about the elderly and the children, especially those persons who are shutting mm-hmm. and may be living alone and cannot get out to do certain things. Mm-hmm. I feel there should be some volunteers out to go and check on them and try to assist mm-hmm. them whatever mm-hmm. they can. Thank you very much. Okay, you're Thank welcome. you, Carla. Yeah. But the thing about the thing about Dominica uh, right now, we have not restricted anybody's movement mm-hmm. to say, well, um, the elderly cannot go to the shop and purchase whatever they need and stuff like that. They can still do what we advise very much is to avoid a lot, um, to practice a lot of that um, distance thing. Mm-hmm from people that may be having a cough or a sneeze, you never know what they're coming down from, and, they, and, and then we also educate you as to um, how to sneeze, mm-hmm. good manners, how to sneeze in, the, in, in your elbow or in a tissue and so on, so you don't spread your germs everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's not just for COVID, but that is good manners, that is good um, um, respiratory etiquette, would call it. Mm-hmm. You, you do those things. Even for the elderly, you know, well, you're an elderly person, you're going out, carry your, your tissue with you if you have to sneeze or you have to cough. Be mindful of your surrounding who is sneezing or coughing close to you and all of these things. Because um, the thing is, I mean, Rosa was so amazing last weekend. <laughs> Somebody s- coughs and is like, you see everybody <laughs> I mean, come on. Very true. Come on. I, I, yeah, it's amazing. And I'm happy that even the school children, and I heard people talk about it, how amazing it is to watch the school children, how they go about washing their hands, washing their hands, washing their hands, but nothing beats the washing of hands. And you don't need an antibacterial soap to mm-hmm. wash hands. I heard people complaining, oh, all the ba- antibacterial soap gone, I can't get an antibacterial soap. You wash your hands with blue soap. You can wash your hand with blue soap, any bath soap. You wash your hands with soap. The important thing is you wash your hands and you wash it clean and thoroughly. You wash your hands. Hand washing, hand washing for, that, for, for, for that matter, I think hand washing, practicing good hand hygiene, this is what will take away or keep the germs as well, the germs of the flu, at bay as much as possible from anyone. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. And if your hands are dirty, and um, the first thing you should think about is washing your hand because um, we try to tell people, do not touch your face and so on. The moment you tell people don't touch your face, you yourself you are touching your face and you are not even conscious of it. It is so easy to touch your nose or touch your eyes and stuff like that. So, um... The hand washing is very, very mm-hmm. important. So we tell you not to not to touch your face, but then you know you're not supposed to wash, um, touch your face. But then if your hands are clean, you know you just wash your hands and so on. There's no problem in touching your face because you know your hands are clean. Mm-hmm. So the key thing here is the washing of the hands, proper hand hygiene. All right. I believe we have another caller on the line. Good day, caller. Good morning. Hi there. Good morning. Interesting program. But my question is... Just a, a, a suggestion. If you have a family of six and one out of the six is tested positive and you are asking them to stay at their home, what happened to the other five that are not sick? Hello? Yes, we're there. Call okay, yes. Um, I was just, my suggestion is like, if one individual out of the six is sick, I think that person should be quarantined not at home, but somewhere else by themselves and do not infect the balance of the family because if you put them home and the other five are not sick, eventually it's going to spread around and that's why it spread along like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. um, So that that person should be like in the institution where they're quarantined. Yes, yes, and then um, that is true. And then we have institution for... um, quarantining persons that are really tested positive. But we, um, f- um, for, for right now, thank God, we don't have any cases. We don't have anybody positive. But then we have in our plans 
um, a facility that has been designated for quarantining people that are um, tested positive with the virus so they do not infect other people. Right. That is, th this point is well taken. Yes. Now, what I would also like to advise the caller, there is a big difference between being self-quarantined and being isolated. Yes. Self-quarantine yes. offers... Yeah, I, understand, I, right. I, I understand that, but mm -hmm. I'm not looking at isolating it. To me, it's But if you test positive, then you would have to be... The others. Right, but if you and test positive for the, the if you test positive for the coronavirus yes. caller, then you cannot be self quarantined anymore. No, no. If you, you test positive, then you will be taken to that facility. facility yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that's yes. why I'm explaining the difference between self quarantine. That's for people even they haven't been tested positive, but be, for precautionary sake because they are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. But let's say like the people coming on the ferry, yes. we know that Guadeloupe or Martinique they have cases there. Mm -hmm. They are asymptomatic and they haven't tested positive but for precaution sake we advise that they have to be self-quarantined that's for different days. for 14 yeah. days mm -hmm. but if you go to the if you your blood work is done and you test positive for mm -hmm. COVID-19 you thing. that's a different story you are taken into isolation Okay, okay, so thank you, caller. And, then, and for the self-quarantine, you are monitored. You are monitored by the um, medical staff. Right. So you are not on your own. So you shouldn't be afraid to report if you know somebody suffering from something or coming down with um, flu-like symptoms and you suspect anything. You shouldn't hide it. It's, um, it's, if you hide it, it means that you are prepared to spread it. Mm -hmm. And you have to think of your family. Think of your family first. It's not just other people going to get it from you, but your family is at risk as well. All right. We have another caller on the line. Good day, caller. Yes, good morning. I have to be on that COVID-19. Sometimes I think the best place to really speak in is at the early childhood center. Mm -hmm. Some people don't realize that, but they are the code, the best messengers to bring home the message. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy when he said that school should stay um, closed, um, open, because I figured out the children being at home is not going to help any situation. If they are school, the, um, at the early childhood centers, we can at least monitor mm -hmm. what they're doing and educate them. So that is what we're doing. We're educating yeah, them what, on co COVID-19. They are not mm -hmm. too small to know um, the, the etiquette of, of um, mm -hmm. what they have to do. Wash their hands, wash their hands. I think wash their hands is a, it's like a song. And we sing it every day. Wash, wash, wash your hands, wash them every day. So they know they have that thing. They have the idea of the coffin. And this is, I mean, I it's a very interesting thing. What I do, I listen to the um, program because I heard them say that the best way to get through Knowing what you do is to get the facts from the people mm -hmm. So you listen to the Ministry of Education, you listen to the um, health, you listen to health, you listen to education. So you as a uh, caregiver can at least educate the young. You are doing it at school. I'm very happy yes. that the children are getting aware of those things. Every day, you're coming home, you're coming back to school, they tell you what they tell their parents about, what they educate their parents <laughs> about. So that is good. I think that is very good. It's a very interesting program. And I listened during the week, and I could not wait for Friday for <laughs> continuation. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank, so Thank you. And as she rightly said, she mentioned the importance of getting the right information. And as she said that, I wanted to clear up something as well. Because, you know, with the advent of social media, the bad news spreads yes. like wildfire. But the good news... <laughs> you don't, you almost don't hear it. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the person giving the news. Right. Social media, like, for example, Facebook. If I read a message on Facebook from somebody like Stalaza, we COVID virus, and I'm going to say, ah, oh, who is Stalaza? And then I forget about that and so on. But if you're a doctor practicing in Dominica and I have to read information on your Facebook page with regard to COVID virus, it goes without saying, I am going to absorb it, line, hook, and sinker. Everything, I take it as the truth. Mm -hmm. Because you're a doctor, you're seeing patient, you know what you're talking about. So people have to be very careful as to the type of information yes. that they put out there. And they have to remember who they are in giving information. Okay. 
Very true. All right, another caller on the line. Good day, caller. Hello, good morning. Hi, good, good morning. morning. I just called in to tell me some of the hotel staff are listening. <laughs> Very good job. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. All, All right. right. Okay, so um, to continue along that line, with regards to this information, I think I feel like I must clear up this um, story that went out um, during the week with regards to um, this young lady that was um, feeling ill and that kind of thing. Because I think we owe it to the cruise industry. Mm -hmm. We owe it to even the agent, um, HHV, which is as well. Mm -hmm. You see, if it was... If it was, for example, one of my staff boarded that particular vessel, the Grand of the Sea, mm -hmm. I would have said, well, okay, the, the information that they gave me, maybe it wasn't correct or they missed something or something was mistaken and so on. But no, I was the one who boarded that vessel. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you for a fact that there were no cases of coronavirus, not even suspect cases, not even flu-like symptom mm -hmm. cases about that vessel. Mm -hmm. That vessel was um, clean. Mm -hmm. I regard it as clean because why? They had elderly, they had so, uh, quite a few elderly persons on board, people in the region of 71, 80 years old. Mm -hmm. And there was only eight cases of gastroenteritis on board, that mm -hmm. is diarrheal I illness on board. Mm -hmm. And of these eight cases, six had already recovered mm -hmm. and two were still in recovery. Mm -hmm. So to, to, for somebody to be an important person in society and to come up with information telling people that the cruise ship had, the ship had two cases of, uh, or more of um, um, influenza on board, COVID-19 um, on board. I mean, this is sad. People have to investigate. People have to ask questions before mm -hmm. you go to the, to the media, to the public, and divulge such kind of dangerous information. information. All right, Ms. Mm -hmm. Thomas, we have another caller on the line. Caller, good day. Hi, good day. Hi, good day, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, good day, Ms. Thomas. Um, yes, good day. Let me, let me quickly comment. Let me quickly commend uh, you all for, you know, your great efforts that you've been putting forth, um, helping uh, the people of Dominica get ready for what may be an impending um, uh, health situation. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Thomas, I want, to, I want to reiterate a very good, great point you made. Because with everything that the authorities are doing, it is going to come down to personal responsibility. Definitely. Yes, yes. Every individual... Exactly. Every individual must do the right thing, must listen to the, to the advice, and must, and must do the sensible thing. Mm -hmm. And something I heard on the radio recently really disturbed me, and you talked about it earlier. Uh, a a well-known radio personality came from a hotspot in the U.S., mm -hmm. and it's, it's on the radio the next day talking about, well, the government is not, is not ready because nobody checked check out the airport, right? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Exactly. Right? If you know you came from a hot spot, mm. do the right thing exactly. and quarantine yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, your right? family, because yes. You, absolutely. Absolutely, because as, you all, as we all know, this thing could be in the system for 14 days without showing up. Yes, Right? Nobody exactly. knows if you are positive. Oh. So in, instead of, of what wisdom is, is in it to go on the radio, what is what what's the benefit of that? Exactly. And see who the benefits? is not ready when you are the Nobody. one who's been, who been traveling, right? Mm -hmm. So it just it just we, we have to just do the, the right thing, the common sense thing and, 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 and stop trying to make, you know, an issue out of everything. True. We have to take responsibility for our action True. and protect ourselves and by doing that we protect other people. Thank you very exactly much. Exactly. So. Thank you so job. very Thank much. You. Yes, Thank you. Welcome. All right. You, you, would you like to, to emphasize a little more on what he's saying, you know? Yes. I, I said that at the mm -hmm. beginning, you know, you come, you know, you're coming from a hot spot. You arrive at the airport. You see somebody doing something. It could be health. It could be um, immigration. But you see somehow some measure is in place to um, try to contain this virus. You know, you are coming from a hot spot instead of 
talking to the to the individuals at the airport and probably educate them on what it is that they are doing wrong or what they are not doing and find out what is going on so that you in yourself may be asymptomatic as the caller rightly said you may have the virus in your system and you're not showing any sign you're looking good mm -hmm. you figure out well you are good no you you have to self quarantine your thing yourself do the right thing and then within 14 days no symptoms no a, any signs of the disease and you know well okay i'm not infected but bypassing the officer not saying anything and going on a radio station or probably going to your buddies and telling them that oh dominica is not ready we are not doing anything you are not helping anybody right. you are not helping the country we have to be our brother's keeper and we have to realize no matter where we belong what denomination we belong to what um political parties we belong to we are all in this together. We are all Dominicans together because if Dominica goes down, every one of us goes mm -hmm. down. It, the virus does not choose. It doesn't tell you, oh, okay, because you are tall and you have plenty money, you're looking good, uh, mm -hmm. you stay back. I'll take, I'll take this little poor man on the street. No, mm -hmm. it does not discriminate. All of us in the same boat. So let us do what we have to do, the responsible thing and try to protect ourselves and protect our family and protect the country on a whole. Definitely. And, you know, I just want to, you know, stress on that even further by telling people, even in the most developed countries, with their plans in place, there yes. can be gaps. There can yes. be loopholes. Thank we all know that. We have to all recognize that. Right. But right. we cannot take for granted that there is a system in place here. And if you see something... You say something. You say something. You know, instead of uh, of the negative talk, not constructive. Right. There's a difference between being constructive. You know, criticism Thank is fine you. if it's constructive, constructive and that yes. lessons can be learned, learned. from that. Yes. But like I said, even yeah. in the most developed countries with the most resources available, there can be gaps. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. we said that at the beginning that this virus, this this COVID-19, it's fluid. It yes. changes mm -hmm. as research continues, as research develops, new information is presented. So that means <laughs> things might have to change. Yeah, even when we, we assess situations, we realize that the symptoms may be changing. We might yes. discover a yes. new yes. symptom and true. then we have to add that, that to the true. list. Mm -hmm. So things change. Protocols may yes. have to change because of that. Because so of that. Thank you. we ask that. You know something, you see something, you say something, say something so that something can be done. done. Exactly. We're asking exactly. that. We have lots more caller, calls coming in. Let's go straight to the phone lines. Caller, good day. Good morning. Hi. Uh, good morning to the panelists. Um, I want to commend the healthcare professionals who are putting themselves out there in Dominica's preparation to deal with this COVID-19 virus should it get to our shores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems that some people are praying for it not to come here, but they're looking for it to come here. But that is a matter for them. Okay. I have heard you all using very nice language and bad news, but I want to add that fake news for yeah. much quicker than good news. That is very true. And in particular, when the fake news is coming from someone, as you said, a healthcare professional. Yeah, and that is why I, you probably won't be able to name, but I can name and I can say that it was very irresponsible for Dr. Sam Christian to go on social media to talk about this case or this, this, this um, thing, uh, this uh, Atkinson thing, and to say like he was in the room testing the patient that this person has uh, this uh, virus, came from cruise ship, and you would believe somebody like that saying these things and when an ignorant person someone who doesn't know better gets this kind of information for someone from someone who should know better they will run with that information and you have to condemn people who are doing that look we are very happy that there's no covid 19 in dominica but i'm rest assured that with the professionals like you all that if a case were to come to dominica we would be prepared to deal with the case. We would be prepared that, look, we would have things in place so that it does not spread to a large section of the population. Because you look at first world countries like Italy and the United States, 
Were they prepared in dealing with this disease? Mm -hmm. Were they prepared to fight it? Look at what is going on with countries where everyone thinks they have better systems than us, whether it's um, healthcare, primary, secondary, any system they have is better than this. But look at what it's doing to them. Mm-hmm. And we would, while we make all these preparations, what we really want is that we never have to come on radio and report that there's a case of COVID-19 in Dominica. And I want to commend you all. You all are putting yourself out there. You all, if this were to come, you all will be the frontline people who have to deal with this. Your families will have to say bye-bye to you for a little time while you stay away to deal and help sick people. Mm-hmm. And people who come from overseas, when you don't quarantine, is not somebody you don't know if you live in Sufra. It's not somebody in Cottage that will get it, you know. I know. It's <laughs> your family that is close to you, your Very friends. True. Because these are the people you will be intermingling with. So it is not like if you come and you support one political party, you'll give it to somebody on the next party. No, it's the people close to you, to you who you deal with who will be most at risk to get it. And I'd just like to encourage you all to keep on doing the good work you are doing. Thank you. And let's Thank hope you. and pray that mm-hmm. as this continues, we continue to report Dominica has no cases of COVID-19. But yes. if one were to come... These are the things we have put in place to stop any spread, to suppress it. Thank you. All Very right. well said. Thank, Thank you, you, caller. And let's go directly to the next caller. Okay, we must have lost that caller. And we want to thank all those of you who are tuned in to this COVID-19 health discussion on DBS Radio, Kyrie FM, and of course, the Office of the Prime Minister's Pages. Back to the phone lines. Caller, good day. Hello, good morning. Hi. Hi. Go ahead, caller. <clears throat> I would like to find out. Do you have any place prepared for the south, for the the, the eastern direct um, area? Because if you have a place in Portsmouth area, what about the south? And if the person come in and they uh, they don't have the symptoms, they go home and they self quarantine. But let us say it is developed in Grand Bay or in Scotts Head. Do we have a place that? You can they can be placed in instead of coming all the way down to the hospital. I'm just asking. Um, we have one place and nowhere in Dominica is first with that. It's mm-hmm. like anywhere in Dominica from Roseau is there's no place more than two hours drive, two hundred two hours mm-hmm. fifteen minutes from Roseau. No place is far. Wherever you are with the disease, you can be transported to the facility. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense of facilities all over the place. You have to have medical staff to man these places. It's a, it's, it's a, a, it's a burden on your resources already. Mm-hmm. So if you have one huge facility where you have a, a, a limited number of persons or a set number of medical persons taking care of these people, it is better managed, it is better handled to take mm-hmm. care of people. That is where people will be transported to. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't make okay. sense having needle spots all over the country. Very good. And, transportation. and just to add a little bit to that, like mm-hmm. uh, Ms. Thomas emphasized earlier, the, the thing with that we, we are stressing is self-quarantine and you will, the health officials in that district, in that area, yes. will follow up with you. Yes. They will yes. check on you. So let's just say you start developing symptoms. Then a different protocol Yes. will then be enacted. Yes. And we have special ambulances assigned mm-hmm. for that specific purpose. Yes. So it's not like we'll tell you to take a random taxi no, if you're not no, feeling not well and leave, you know, Bellevue to come down to the... There are special ambulances assigned just to deal with that. Yes. So if the person becomes symptomatic in the Southern Health District, there is the health district will follow up, will take notes, will assess the situation and advise accordingly if they need to be transported to the isolation area. Okay. All right, caller, thank you so much. Yes, thank thank you. you so much. No problem, I'm caller. Good. Thank I you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Oh. All right. Do we have another caller on the line? Not as yet. Let, let me ask you, Miss Thomas. Mm-hmm. You mentioned you are the frontline workers. What about protecting yourselves? We talk about all what we do for everybody else. But you have to protect yourself and your staff. And you also, you know, mental mental health is, is also very, very important in, in, in situations thank like this. Tell us about that. very much. And let me tell you, um, what do you want to do, Miss? Go ahead. What, um, in terms of protection for the staff, we have supplies for 
every staff at the um, locations and we emphasize the use of the personal protective equipment that they are provided with you have to use it and i am um, it's like we have a WhatsApp group, and every day I will stress to the staff, look, you are right at the front of the, um, the, the, the thing, dealing with passengers coming in and so on. Protect yourself. Make sure you have your mask on. Make sure you have your gloves. Make sure you have your, uh, your, your gongs on. Protect yourself, protect yourself, protect yourself. And you know, one thing I can tell you that is, that was so very good for the mental health of a lot of the healthcare workers mm -hmm. in Dominica. You see that um, case, all these number of cases that were <laughs> tested and the result came out with that big red zero <laughs> that has been going all over the place. Mm -hmm. That is, a, it's, it's like a, 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 a boost for, a, um, how you call it? Mm -hmm. A big boost for the, for the mental health right. on the whole. It is, it, people feel more calm, mm -hmm. more at ease. You see people smiling and so mm -hmm. on. They are so confident. They feel so good, mm -hmm. you know, because of that. And we know what we are doing. It's a lot of work. And then people tend to think, well, oh, they are not doing nothing. People will just sit down and tell you, well, but they're not doing nothing. And mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm hearing them all the time. They're not doing nothing. There are times when I leave home, if I don't eat a proper breakfast and I don't like to leave, eat very early. Mm -hmm. If I don't eat a proper breakfast in the morning, I don't get to eat until probably all eight, nine o'clock in the night, wow. you know, when I reach home mm -hmm. or when I come from a meeting and that kind of thing. It's like you go out and you are there in preparation. Sometimes you have to find yourself on the ground doing the work as well, helping um, um, one of your staff and so on. You are all over the place and you never have the time to mm -hmm. stop and eat and so on. I mean... It is stressful. Yes. And then when you hear people just talking and saying that they are doing nothing, you just have to shake your head. Mm. I don't let it get to me. Some people might take it to heart and end up with high blood pressure and, and, and whatever else. But I don't let it get to <laughs> me. You know, once you know what you are doing and you know you are doing it from the goodness of your heart with Definitely. the best of heart. You just go and do what you are doing and feel good about it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We have another caller on the line. Caller, good day. Yeah, I just want to say in regard to that fake news, I think it is time that you, that may not be on your line of discussion, but I want to put it out there. It is time that the authorities pass legislation to deal with these things because it's not just coronavirus or anything. Fake news down the road is going to have a nasty effect on our economy because what it does, it discourages people from coming to our country. It will discourage visitors that we need, especially post corona from coming to our country to spend money in our country to boost our economy. It is time, because we take it lightly, oh, well, somebody just spread a fake news. No, it has repercussions. Mm -hmm. And when you repeat it and you keep adding, and every, every, every month is a different subject on a fake news, it mm -hmm. erodes the, 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 um, the credibility of your country. It is time that they pass legislation to stop those things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, well, like you said, Carla, that is a little above our pay grade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yes, we all have to, when we share things and circulate things, we all have to think of the ripple effect yes, that, that these true. things that will is, have. Because fear and panic cripples people. It cripples people. It's you true. know, so yeah. if it, on, on spreading uh, fake news or necessary news, that cripples their reaction, you know, and the precaution that they need to take yeah, to protect true. themselves. Mm -hmm. All is. right, we have another caller on the line. Caller, good day. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning, caller. Go ahead. In terms of the nursing homes, will you be all advising, um, motivating them? What do you all do? Will do be, will be doing any work with them, the nursing homes? Um, we have um, health promotion, I can tell you, mm -hmm. um, Ministry of Health. There's um, a list of all the nursing homes um, in the country, and there is that there's um, a procedure in place as to how to deal and educate and otherwise manage these nursing, so nursing homes as far as um, coronavirus is concerned. Mm -hmm. I know for okay. sure there is something in place. Okay, for both um, residents and workers? Mm -hmm. Yes, all institutions, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, Caller, for that. We have another caller on the line. Caller, good day. All right. 
We do not have another call on the line. Just to reiterate what the numbers are, 1-800-327-616-1327. Of course, the 448-3284. And for our overseas callers, 305-432-9744. 305-432-9744. All right. So, Ms. Thomas, we were talking about the, you know, the care of your employees, their mental health. And, uh, you know, we were also stressing how important it is. They need the encouragement you know so family members loved ones they need your encouragement yes especially from um their colleagues Mm -hmm. they need the encouragement because i mean if you if you have to come to work um and knowing that the the it's a stressful job and so on and then you come to work and then you are at loggerheads with the boss or Mm -hmm. the supervisor that doesn't do good for your mental health Mm -hmm. especially at a time like no all of us need to pull together like a little family and discuss our problems, how we can address them, how we can um, mm-hmm. improve on certain things and don't have this kind of um, negativity or bad vibes going on among colleagues and that kind of thing. I am quite happy that every staff member in my department, we are on board, we are together with each other and we are doing very well. Mm-hmm. It really, really helps the people at the in the front line in doing, being at ease and being calm in doing what they are doing, and at the same time protecting themselves. Because um, sometimes when you are under stress, if things are not going well, you forget to put on the the the, the thing that is supposed to the protective equipment that mm-hmm. is supposed to be protecting you because your mind is elsewhere mm-hmm. it's not into what you are doing mm-hmm. but if you know everybody is on board with you and so on you feel good you know your family is okay you reach at work and then you know well okay before even before i arrive at work or oh, um, my supervisor called me and reminded me of this reminded me of that everything is going well mm-hmm. it sort of makes your day you are looking forward to the mm-hmm. to the job you know that kind of thing so it doesn't augur well on us um in the different departments to be at loggerheads with each other mm-hmm. uh, um, having um this bad spirit going on among us and so on that is a time we need to pull together and give each other the support that we deserve all right definitely let's get back to the phone lines caller good day good day hi, hi. good day go ahead caller how are you doing well thank you and yourself I'm all right. I'm calling from Portsmouth. Mm-hmm. I have a concern about the yachts at Turkey Beach. There, there is, there are a lot of persons coming out from the yachts, and they are in, in, intermingling with the locals all on the beach. Mm-hmm. What, what have you all put in place? to deal with that situation very good question caller yes you see um we have measures in place um to handle these um vessels as well um in, with regards to the health of the passengers on board um you may see them and you may feel well nothing is being done or um they are always there and stuff like that it's the same thing um with the the cruise ship coming in. I heard so many stories when the cruise ships were coming in. But the cruise ships, when you see a cruise ship dock in your port, most times it is even the safest place to be than um, certain areas and stuff like that. The cruise ship is very, very clean. If Mm -hmm. you see a cruise ship dock on your port, it means that the cruise ship is very, very clean. Because with the cruise ship, we they are they have agents on la- uh, on land that make the arrangements with us where we get the health um documents on time we can examine it we can ask questions we can request um certain information certain documents and everything we do everything we have to do to ascertain that everything on board these vessels mm-hmm. are fine the yachts can be pretty hard to handle, but we still have measures in mm-hmm. place for them where we monitor the health of the passengers on board because mm-hmm. they are in our country and it's like they are part of us. Right. So it doesn't make sense that they are there and you just forget about mm-hmm. them. You're not dealing with them. Mm-hmm. We monitor them as well. All right. If I remember clearly, there's a flag system with the yachts before you even board the yachts to inspect or do anything. They're supposed to have some... Not, not the yachts. Not, the, not yachts the yachts don't carry okay. them. The other boats carry them. They carry the, the flags. Boats. Okay. 
the cargo boats and the cruise ship, they carry mm-hmm. this yellow flag. Right. Yes. Okay. If, once you see the yellow flag is flying, mm-hmm. it means that they have not been given clearance. Okay. Because anytime you given you the, the ship is given clearance to do business with the country, mm-hmm. it take down the yellow the flag. The yellow flag. So anytime you see the yellow flag flying, it means that I need clearance. Okay. I have not been cleared. Yes. Okay. And just to stress, we we did the health promotion unit. We did a, a session with the yacht boys in mm. Portsmouth not yeah. too long ago. You know, so like you said, we there there are things in place. Things are being done mm. to not only deal with the yachters but the the yacht boys who will who. In, in many cases are the first ones who even you know interact yes, yes. with 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 the the yachters so yes that is true. actually the word is your tees your really tees <laughs> yeah um we we are mindful of that as well and then um we have put measures in place for these people um through their mm-hmm. um, associations they have associations as well mm-hmm. because um that is that is that was a very risky thing where they are the people they call them water taxis mm-hmm. they are the people who first make contact with the yacht and even transport people from the yacht to the shore and stuff like that mm-hmm. before the vessel is cleared right. and anything like that so um measures have been put in place with them they know what they have to do right mm-hmm. now and how they have to stay away definitely uh, you know bef- um, if the vessel has not been cleared so uh-huh. we, we have something in place for them all right back to the phone lines caller good day Hello. Hi. yes caller we can't hear you very clearly I, i'm sorry caller not to cut you off but we can't hear you very clearly we're going to ask you to try again for us please because we can hardly hear you all right just try us again and i believe we have another caller on the line Okay, so you were say, we were talking about the yacht boys, and we were again. What we want to emphasize is, even if you don't see it, doesn't mean something isn't happening. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, a lot is happening behind the scenes. And, and that is a that is a um a perception that people have, and I just find they are using it too much. Mm-hmm. I need to know everything. Mm-hmm. You don't need to know everything. That is why government pay people to look after you. <laughs> Something is happening. Mm-hmm. You don't have to know everything, but it is happening. People are taking care of you. And Dominica, I have to tell you, we have your best interests at heart mm-hmm. and we are taking care of you. Definitely. Another caller on the line. Caller, good day. Good day. Hi, good day, Hi. caller. Thanks for tuning in. I'm calling from New York. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. I am so happy about the program that is going on in Dominica. And I know you all are on point. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what people say. I know Dominica is taking good care of its people. Mm-hmm. I am in America, and they have so much bleach there. They are making so much mistakes. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Hello? Yes. yes go ahead. I am in America, mm-hmm. and I listening to your program in Dominica, mm-hmm. which is very, very interested. You all are on point. Everything is just good. We have people just trying to spread fake news, and I'm not one of them that listen to fake news. Because we have a small country in Dominica, but I know all you have everything in perspective. I'm in America, and we have everything there. And people more scared here than they should be. They should be, and we have everything. So you all are doing a great, great job in Dominica. And may God bless you all. And protect you all. Thank That's you. all what I want to see. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that. That that means a lot to to the yes, healthcare yes. officials. I can tell you that. <laughs> Thank you so yes. much. Yes. Thank you so much, caller, for that. Mm-hmm. You know, Miss Thomas, we're getting close to the yes, end yes. of today's program, and mm-hmm. there's never enough time because there's always that so is, much to true. say. But uh, mm-hmm. let let me engage you in your closing remarks. What what else would you like to emphasize for the general public? Okay, I I want to emphasize the um, hygiene hand hygiene etiquette that we keep um, educating the public about. And we are trying to educate just about everybody. Mm -hmm. All different groups are calling us. And then what we have done, we have given COVID-19 priority. We have designated a team to educate the different groups and so on. I don't want to... um, 
feel like I'm advertising because they are already <laughs> overwhelmed. And I know the health promotion in themselves are already overwhelmed. But the education that we are providing for you, please go by that. Mm -hmm. Practice good hand hygiene. We are doing it in the schools as well because we know once you tell it to the children, they take it as gospel and they take it home <laughs> and they educate the family as well. Proper hand hygiene proper respiratory hygiene when you are Definitely. coughing when you are sneezing if you are leaving your home never leave without a handkerchief or a tissue for you to cough in not because you may have a flu because from time to time we clear our throats <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling telling you even sitting at meetings these days people are afraid to cough <laughs> They are afraid to clear their throat because somebody next to them might pull their chair and think, well, they are they're spreading something. I'm telling you, a lot of people are panicking with regards to that. And we don't want, what we don't want is the fear and panic. Mm -hmm. We want people to know, well, okay, I know about proper hand or hygiene. Mm -hmm. I wash my hands. I wash my hands. I even carry my soap with me wherever I go so that I don't only use the water, but I use soap to wash my mm -hmm. hands. Carry us up with you. It's not a problem. And as we say, it's not just um, antibacterial soap. You can use any soap for washing your hand. Mm -hmm. It's not only hand sanitizer. You might not have hand sanitizer. My God, get rubbing alcohol. It has 70% mm -hmm. alcohol in it. It's good. Mm -hmm. If you can't get high, um, rubbing alcohol, um, bleach is another thing that you can use for sanitizing. You don't necessarily have to use expensive Lysol for sanitizing surfaces and so mm -hmm. on. Bleach does just as good a job. And if you are at home, if you have a food establishment and you need to sanitize, you use either bleach or you use boiled water, mm -hmm. steam, hot steam for sanitizing. So all in all, not because we are concerned about um, COVID and we are giving COVID, um, coronavirus our, our almost 100 percent of our time right now for the people employing the other risky area we are calling the food mm -hmm. industry to think, well, they should um, um, they should let their guards down and do mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. they feel like. We have persons that will be looking on you and we need you to help us as well. Be mindful of sanitation, proper sanitation and mm -hmm. cleanliness in your food establishment. Educate your staff as well with, with, um, with regards to proper respiratory hygiene mm -hmm. um, and and also hand hygiene as well. Do these things in your place. And if, we, if everybody does that with um, keeping Dominica safe in mind, we won't have COVID-19 <laughs> on our shows. All thank right. You. Thank you so much, Ms. Thomas, for your time. We want to thank all those who have been tuned in for the past hour or so. And we want to thank all our media partners for coming on board because you are one of the key resources in spreading the factual, yes. current and correct information. So thank you yeah. to our media partners. Of course, we ask, we urge our public to get the information from the credible sources. Listen to Environmental Health. Listen to the Ministry of Health. Listen to what even you can check out WHO's website, PAHO's yes, website, exactly. credible sources. Mm -hmm. And also, like Ms. Thomas said, practice the proper hygiene. Protect yourself, protect your family. Yes. We invite you to tune in again on Monday, same time, for another edition of this COVID-19 health discussion. Thank you again for joining us here on DBS Radio, Kyrie yeah. FM, and the Office of the Prime Minister. Thank you all. Across the Caribbean, you listen. Across the world, you listen. And at home in the Nature Isle, you listen. You listen to DBS for unbiased coverage of breaking news.